what I've found from experience is data warehouse design is a bit of a black art. It amazes me how many people struggle with it. So most technology people are brought up through operational systems. Data warehousing is more set-based, it's more structured for performance. So we, we store the systems, the data is structured in a different way. So I'm going to assume the, the most popular way for data warehousing now is a star schema. Uh, okay, there's debate out there in the industry whether that's right or wrong, but that's still the most popular mechanism for implementing data warehouses. So why do we have a star schema design? Well, fundamentally it's on the assumption that our transactions, our facts, are very voluminous. So we make that as narrow as possible because it's so long. So by that, it's very, very normalized which is quite shocking to most people because you say is a star schema normalized, denormalized, they always say denormalized. But the biggest table in the system is actually very normalized. It's, it's all foreign keys pointing to dimension tables. Now it's the dimension tables that are heavily denormalized to remove joins from the database because databases are not as efficient at processing joins when you're running a query against them. So the fundamentals of a star schema is quite simple. Take out as many joins as possible by denormalizing the dimensions and make the fact table, which is the largest table, as normalized as possible. So what this means then is the dimension tables are relatively trivial compared to the size of the fact table, hence why we can make them as wide and denormalized as we like. Now, one of the things a lot of people get wrong is they fail to denormalize enough into the dimensions and they snowflake. If you've got a large fact table, sometimes a big dimension table, as in width, it doesn't matter because the number of rows in it are trivial. Where this becomes a problem is when the dimension table has many, many records in it. And there are various ways to overcome that situation where you've got a very large dimension table. And at some instances, the dimension table can be almost as big as the fact table. So for example, you're a, a worldwide bank. Your accounts table is a dimension table. But one of the big queries you'll be asking is number of accounts. So that accounts table will be very large and will almost act like a fact table in some cases. But obviously, we have transactions for that account, which is the actual fact table. So that needs to be managed in quite an intelligent way.